Welcome back to the Money Pod. We got Matt Kimmel on once again. You cannot get away from the guy. He was just here in Colorado with me. We talked about ordinals. If you're interested in learning about NFTs on top of Bitcoin, go and check out that latest podcast. That was a great one. But today we got to get to the news roundup. It's Saturday morning for you guys. Friday morning for us right now as we're recording this. We're going to talk about the news that hit the mining beat this week. We're going to start talking about how Bitcoin's price going up has allowed a lot of miners to restructure their debt or restructure their operations, which is a nice nice little break from what's been going on for a while. Then we're going to talk about Giga raising $10 million to continue building its operations and expand internationally. And lastly, we are going to talk about a few different CEOs and execs leaving the industry right now, which is always an uncomfortable subject, but definitely something to chat a little bit about. So let's go into the first subject. But before that, Matt, you get all safe back to Austin. Your uh, your energy's online. I'm back. My energy's up. But enough about me. Let's do the roundup. It's all about that. It's I didn't I didn't let you talk for like the first sixty seconds during my intro. It was a great intro. Thank you, thank you. I stumbled a few times there, but we're here. Okay, let's go. Let's go to it. The first story actually is from our friend David Pan over at Bloomberg. Great Bitcoin mining reporter. Go check out his work. Uh, headline reads troubled crypto miners get breathing room as if bitcoin rebounds and as you'll point out in a second matt bitcoin is up quite a bit year to date mining stocks are up as well if we look at a new article from our friend anthony power in our mining memo newsletter see that there's been a few miners who have had triple digit gains in percentages for their share prices and that sort of follows a rally in a lot of different stocks uh, since the beginning of the year, it looks like the Fed might be pivoting. At the very least, they're slowing down. Things are a little bit more bright and cheery at the moment, and that's leading to Bitcoin prices changing. And that's allowing some of these miners to take a moment, restructure things, get more favorable terms for their debt, get more favorable terms for raising capital. The first one is Terra Wolf, which was basically able to put a pause on making debt payments because it has raised about $32 million in equity relief. And then the second would be Core Scientific, still going through his Chapter 11 bankruptcy, but it has uh, extinguished all its debt with NIDIG by giving all its machines over to NIDIG. And we can break into those in a second, but I'll hand it over to you for Bitcoin price talk for a second. That was a solid recap. Yeah. It, so, you know, the dust has kind of settled from all of the, the over sort of leveraged companies in the space blowing up after last year. Price year to date is up. Uh, 42, almost 43%, like super significant, right? I think there was a lot of uh, concern around BCG Genesis and if we're going to have another major blow up, right? Um, but it seems like that's going to be kind of like a knockdown drag out long winded thing and not as kind of immediate um, uh, of a distress signal as when FTX kind of went down, right? Or when Luna went down kind of earlier last year. Um, and so the, the market's kind of, it's, it's rebalancing, um, price is going up and that gives some release, some relief to the miners to kind of like reassess, restructure and basically plan, um, for this year, seeing a lot of, uh, shuffling around the executive teams, right? Core is kind of same story, right? They're going through the bankruptcy process. Nidig once again is taking on, I think it's 27,000 machines this time. So they're clearly um, willing to negotiate and debt restructure with these miners, take on these machines, um, either hold them uh, to sell again when ASIC prices go higher or mine themselves. And it kind of seems like they uh, plan on mining themselves. Heard some rumors on that. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm glad that miners are getting some relief. And you mentioned ordinals, right? Fees as a percentage of uh, block rewards are going up. More fees are coming online because of these NFTs blocks are coming in full and that's going to help miners as well so it's not just the the dollar amount it's also in in bitcoin terms so love to see it in the past couple of weeks more fees on top of bitcoin though i have a feeling that's not going to change things too much uh let's talk about the core scientific debt for a second so they just raised about 70 million dollars um from b riley in order to continue operations and mm -hmm. why would b riley do that well because b riley has a lot of money on core scientific's uh, balance sheet right now and so they have to basically like give them money in order to keep core scientific on its feet and if you look at this core scientific document the chapter 11 bankruptcy filing with nidig they even say this in the documentation saying it 
It is in their best interests of their estates to rationalize their fleet of miners using the self-mining operations towards a somewhat smaller but more efficient fleet of miners. To that end, they decided to you know, basically swap this debt for the machines. They gave Nidig all these machines back. They don't have this debt anymore. It made sense on a percentage change, right? Because this debt was more expensive than the machines were worth. The collateral value swapped. You've seen this a lot with these ASA back loans where they weren't uh, conditioned correctly and now the lender is underwater. For me, this makes a question about Nidig. Uh, last time we talked about Nidig getting more machines, I think they had about 50 to 55,000 machines on their balance sheet that they were having to take in from def uh, defaults. What are you going to do with that? And now they have another 30,000 machines. Like, yes, a lot of these machines are so very useful. They're still going to make Bitcoin, but finding a place to put them is tough. We also know that Celsius is shopping for places to put its ASICs. There's not a lot of rack space. They're not making it like they used to these days. So best of luck to figure out what to do there. The Terrorwolf stuff, we won't talk about that too much. It just seems like they basically are able to uh, push back debt, debt payments because they raised some more equity, which makes sense because the value of their assets went up. I just want to quickly say, th these are the trends that a lot of people are expecting right now, right? Lenders are going to make less ASIC back loans. Miners are going to move to strengthen their balance sheet. These are kind of like what a lot of people think is going to happen. And, and I'm in the same boat, I think, ahead of the halving um, going into the next cycle. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and shout out to uh, Drew Armstrong's piece on minor debt. People should go check that out. It's really good. Some of the brains blog, brains with two eyes. Okay, let's go over to Giga. They just raised $10 million in a Series A to continue building out their flared gas operations. Giga is basically in Louisiana and Texas. They operate these very small mines. They also have this interesting part of their business model where they revamp and retrofit uh, use diesel generators and then sell them to Bitcoin miners or sell them back to hospitals or sell them wherever. Basically just like a huge engine that you can plug in somewhere if you need to get energy. Uh, so they basically have almost two business models there. This money is going to be used for payroll and building out their operations on the generator side and then also to expand internationally. Giga, of course, was in that Vice video, I think from like last summer. That's where a lot of people became familiar with them. Uh, they're well known within the Bitcoin mining circles just because they are building this operation front that a lot of people find sexy and interesting. That is the flared gas model. And to me, the walk away from the story wasn't really about the $10 million check they got. It's more so about like, this might be like a really good play during the bear market. Like this is an interesting story. This is something that people care about. People don't like fossil fuels, but they do like fossil fuels being used correctly. They do like this Bitcoin mining innovation on top of it. And this might be a really good story for people to pursue. And then you get money out of it. Uh, again, throw it over to you for your take. Yeah, great point. I think everyone agrees capturing leaked methane is a good idea. Period. End of story, right? And and congrats to the Giga guys for doing that. And particularly this raise. They have a great story. I think they were building generators out of one of their parents' backyards. It kind of all started back when they were at uh, Texas A&M. So shout out Texas Mining. Happy to see them keep growing. Um, but yeah, the more uh, leaked methane mining that's out there, I think good for Bitcoin and good for the environment wins all around. Love it. Okay, we'll leave it there. Hopefully there's more work on that front for us. I think it's, to me, it's like the most interesting thing in Bitcoin mining right now. And it, it probably has been. Uh, the explosions on the public company side have been pretty interesting as well. But in terms of like the fundamentals, uh, the methane capture stuff is just really interesting. If you guys want a good story recap on it we did do a mini documentary with the j mining team last year on this very subject so go check it out on our youtube channel okay let's turn to the last story this is maybe not a very fun one but something that we definitely need to talk about and as chad everett harris the cco of riot platforms uh was terminated without cause on wednesday of this week that means we don't have a lot of details on what the termination was we just know that there's no more employment there Chad was definitely like the face of Riot in a lot of ways and more so maybe even like the face of Texas Bitcoin mining, right? He made a lot of these videos. He's flying around the Rockdale site in his Raptor, like just a real good story there uh, that we love to follow on Twitter and elsewhere. And now he's no longer with the team. I think uh, just in fair, fair view here, like no speculation, we need to wait and find out more details of why this occurred. Uh, you never quite really know. Uh, that being said, definitely going to be a hot commodity. So I'm interested to see where he lands next. 
Yeah, you're right. We should definitely wait until we hear the story that comes out. But right now it's spicy. It's kind of uh, we got snuck under the radar with all of the ordin- ordinals banter that's going back and forth. I mean, he was a, a major sort of figure in the mining space and kind of to the uh, traditional news sphere as well. He's a very sort of public figure. Um, and now we kind of don't know the full picture, but he's gone from Riot, right? And so interested to hear more. It's kind of a head turner at the moment, but I have a feeling there's a story here and we just don't know it yet. Yeah, it kind of feels like we're covering like a NBA or NFL trading story here a little bit. because definitely like a big face within the mining industry and I have a feeling he's going to end up on another Bitcoin mining team or going to end up with like another data center team somewhere like Google something like that uh, and could be turning heads there. So we will wait for that full story. The bigger context here, of course, like can't be missed. And that is that there's been a lot of shuffling of executives over the last two years and specifically over the last uh, three months, I'd say. So we had Bitfarm CEO resigned recently, just this earlier in the week, we had uh, the CFO of Argo blockchain also stepped down. So like, it's not uncommon to see executives leave right now. I think it was just a little bit different when we saw that uh, Chad was leaving just because he was so connected with the Riot team, so connected with that build out in Rockdale. I mean, if you actually go look at the details with Riot platforms, uh, Chad was brought in as part of an acquisition from an earlier mining company and had helped build out this whole Rockdale site and had started building out the new Corsicana site. And the Corsicana site is going to be the biggest Bitcoin mine in North America. And the Rockdale site is currently the largest one in North America. So definitely like something worth our attention and we will definitely follow up with it later. You're right. You summed it up really well. I'll just add to the tail end of that. Um, kind of prices getting better. Miners are kind of still in survival mode. I think that's the core scientific terror wolf side of the story. But t- things are getting better, and it's helping them make decisions and maybe push back the timeline of when they would have had, had to do certain things otherwise. That's can't disagree. Can't disagree. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy the show, please give it a like on YouTube, a subscription on our YouTube channel, or even give us five star reviews on your podcast application of choice. It helps other miners find this podcast. And if you really like the show, give us an email at media at compassmining.io. Maybe we'll make an ordinal and send it to you. I don't know. Ah, look at that.